All right. Greetings, everybody. I'd like to call the facility committee meeting tonight to, to order. Um, would, please call the roll. Anderson? Here. Hartke? Here. Quisenberry? Here. Rector? Rosales? Here. Schwartz? Maxwell? Like a motion to approve tonight's agenda. So moved. Second. Motion has been made and, and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Those opposed, I should have said. But anyway, the motion carried. All right. Approval of the minutes of the June 7, 2016 meeting. Uh, motion, and then we'll go into discussion. Second? For approval. I'll second. Okay. All right, now discussion. Yeah, this is a small thing, but um, if you look at the end of the minutes, there was a vote on the um, cancellation of the July meeting, which says that it was unanimous. I am fairly certain that like two minutes before we had that vote, Mr. Hartke left the meeting, and it's not noted in the minutes that Mr. Hartke left because I'm sure if he would have been here, he would have voted no. So I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not too much of a stickler, but if somebody read the minutes, the, uh, a constituent who believes as Mr. Harkey does might feel like he has fallen short of his um, stand he's taken on that. And, and I would, I'm pretty sure he left just as we were considering that. So I would suggest that it should be noted that Mr. Harkey did not vote on that issue. I'm happy to let it stand as unanimous because I was not here, but thank you, Mr. Quisenberry, because I am a stickler on that issue. All right, so how should we correct those minutes? I would say before that motion occurred, a, a note that Mr. Harkey left the meeting, because that's what we typically do. If you look at some of our other minutes, there's, and I, I think it was just at the end and it just wasn't noticed. I got a nod from the clerk's desk over there, so I think that'll work. I'll change them before they're posted. So it'll have to be a motion as amended. Can we amend the motion then? I think well, we just vote. Vote, vote as, amended. as amended. Vote as amended. Okay. Vote as amended. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. And thank you, Mr. Quisenberry, for calling that to our attention. At this point, I would ask for uh, public participation. I do not have any slips. I do not see anybody that would appear to be from the public here to submit a slip. So seeing none and having no slips, I will therefore uh, close the citizens' participation portion of this meeting. Thank you. Uh, are there any communications from the uh, committee members? Hearing none, uh, I'll ask uh, the board chair, do you have anything you'd like to add? All right, thank you. Um, then I'll uh, go right on into item seven, approval of the contract for ITB number 2016-005, the ADA compliance exterior concrete and asphalt work. And I'm going to ask Dana to give us the uh, background on this. Uh, thanks, Gary. I, I do apologize for handing out a lot of material uh, this evening on this particular subject matter. Uh, bids were opened up Thursday afternoon at 2 o'clock. Uh, it was probably late Monday before we finalized uh, recommendations from Burns Clancy and Bailey Edwards uh, in getting stuff together, so it was, it was entirely too late to get it out, but yet 
we need to hand it out to, to keep this project moving forward. Uh, we contacted originally nine uh, bidders between Burns, Clancy, uh, Bailey Edwards, and myself. Uh, we had five bids submitted uh, Thursday afternoon, which we felt uh, very positive about. Uh, the high was uh, mid-Illinois concrete at 187.1. The low, Schaumburg and Schaumburg of Danville at uh, 82,219. Uh, there is a significant difference certainly between the high and the low. There is a significant difference between the low and the next lowest bidder uh, with Deuce Construction here in town at 132,400,000. Um, both our, our professional partners in this uh, contacted both the two lowest bidders to verify that they understood the specifications, uh, thoroughly understood the locations and what was necessary to uh, comply uh, to ADA. And um, the document that you have uh, behind this is a uh, recommendation from, from Bailey Edwards um, recommending that we proceed with Schaumburg and Schaumburg uh, at 82,000. Uh, and I have a, a, a memorandum behind that that is basically suggesting the same thing. Th this is a good company out of Danville. Uh, they've bid on uh, a several of our projects in the past, um, have come close, but uh, have not made it. Um, uh, they are a construction company. Uh, this is not um, road builders. <laughs> yes, we're doing a little asphalt work that they'll have a sub on, but most of it's uh, tearing out, forming, and, uh, and taking care of some areas to, to reduce the slopes and the cross slopes um, and then put in a, a walkway uh, over at the uh, courthouse. So uh, I feel pretty positive. Uh, certainly our, our two uh, professional uh, partners in this uh, feel very positive about Schaumburg and Schaumburg. They have uh, been in projects with them before and feel very comfortable in uh, their ability to get this work done at this amount. Uh, an additional caveat, we certainly will be watching. Uh, Burns and Clancy and uh, Bailey and Edwards will be out there uh, during construction as well as, uh, as Kirk and I. So uh, we will be checking on their, their work as we move forward. I'd like to move approval of the acceptance of the bid from Schomburg and Schomburg in the amount of 82219 for ITB number 2016-005 for ADA compliance of exterior concrete and asphalt work. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, any, like right I'm right. sorry, any discussion? Mm -hmm. I, I shouldn't go back. Any discussion of that? Hearing none, um, again, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion apparently car carried unanimously. Is that the way? You, any opposed? I'll put it that way. Motion carried unanimously. Um, so let's go on at this point. Thank you all. And let's go on to the... Uh, Facility Director's Report. Thank you. Real, real quick, if I could ask, it looks like this is half what we expected it to cost. Yes. That's great news. Yes. Uh, it was forecasted at 170000 by uh, both Bailey Edwards and uh, Burns and Clancy. Obviously, some of the uh, bids that came forward were right in that range, and a number of them were uh, below that. So... It helps, we did lower the scope uh, during the process at the courthouse. That certainly was a savings, probably about thirty, thirty-five thousand uh, dollars $35,000 because the DOJ came back and, and uh, said yes to a plan that, uh, that we came up with. So, but thank you. Um, Quick update, not quick updates, but updates on uh, pod 200 and 300. This is the uh, Brookings pod 200 and 300 boiler replacement uh, project. There is a, a GHR document, uh, and again, I apologize for the length of it, but I thought it was important uh, to share that uh, uh, our contractor is Reliable Plumbing from here in Champaign. They actually started work on the 13th of uh, July. Uh, they have torn out... Uh, both boilers uh, in pod 200 and 300 uh, demoed uh, a number of uh, materials uh, within each of those locations. 
Uh, they've come back in and uh, uh, enlarged the uh, concrete slabs that the new boilers, and there'll be two in each location, uh, sit on. Uh, the um, Most of the uh, items necessary for the installation have arrived with the exception of the boilers. They are getting here tomorrow. Um, they are way ahead on this project. They ex anticipate another two weeks uh, to complete this, which really follows in line with our um, proposed time schedule uh, that we put together back in early June uh, for this project of being a substantial completion, completion by the end of August you know, with the punch list coming out right after the, uh, the holiday and, and finish up about a week later. So we, we feel pretty good. There's some great pictures in here that they give you a little bit of idea what, uh, what it looked like before with the, with the boilers uh, and then not. Pictures are always kind of interesting, I think, to follow through to give you an idea since you guys don't see all this stuff that often. Um, you know, our, our pumps and tanks that uh, are necessary for this project, like I said, have been delivered. They're here on site. Um, the next two weeks will go pretty fast, but uh, they've been terrific to work with. Um, and uh, we anticipate the rest of the project moving forward um, very smoothly. I will add that uh, GHR is assisting us in filling out the DCO information. Uh, this is to uh, possibly obtain a grant uh, for the work here. Based on the, the uh, 2016 slash 17 standards that just uh, came out of the new office in Springfield in, in June, uh, we're looking at a possible $18,850 uh, rebate, if you will, for, uh, for this project. So uh, we don't feel pretty positive about that. We'll get our paperwork in uh, by Friday of this week, and I think it'll probably take a month, but we would anticipate uh, uh, getting a, a affirmative response uh, from that organization. And uh, uh, I think I mentioned that early on we would be doing that, but we are following through and, and handling that. Um, a reminder, the project cost, uh, Reliable's uh, a bid was 161990 and the contract with GHR is 20900 So you're looking at a total expense of 182890 uh, with a rebate of 18000 550 uh, that'll go back to our capital fund. Uh, feel very positive about that. Uh, wish we could get more. Unfortunately, the uh, uh, new uh, uh, numbers from DCO were half of what they were uh, the previous year. Uh, we're reimbursed, getting, we'll get reimbursed hopefully at $7 per 1,000 BTUs. And in uh, a year ago, it was $14 a 1,000. So, um, but we'll take the 18. Any questions? Uh, Patsy? It's not a question, but I do want to thank you on the public record for the hard work <clears throat> of keeping our relationships in a very positive framework with Reliable. Uh, next uh, update is on our... Uh, <laughs> Precast wall uh, project. I brought this up a few months ago. Um, County Highway decided that they uh, really wanted to be able to paint their their building, and since the project overlapped two fiscal years, they had the money this fiscal year to be able to take care of it. Um, uh, we, <laughs> I think, we put up about nine or ten paint samples for uh, Jeff Blue's uh, uh, committee, and we finally got one selected. Uh, it uh, it it took a little while, uh, but it's it's done and uh, the paint's been ordered. Uh, painters will be here sometime next week to uh, to start this process. This is to cover up the exterior of the building where we actually cut into the precast panels and they're, they're they are marked up as well as the the satellite jail was, if you remember uh, what that looked like. And uh, with the coat of paint over the top of it, you can't see it. it looks pretty pristine and, and, uh, it certainly is watertight now. So. Mr. Chair, if yet, yeah, please don't leave us hanging. What color did you pick? Did they pick? Uh, 
it, it's it's a variation of what was out there. I, I, frankly, I I went through so many colors. I I don't remember the exact one, Josh. Uh, it, it, it was. Uh, you know, I kind of joke with Jeff. I said, Jeff, I'm never moving a couch for you. <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like they looked at nine colors of paint and chose the one that was most like the one they already had. Is that what it sounds like? I, I think so. Too okay. many of them had too much red or too much pink or they were too white. They were. This one's kind of a, you know, light beige, if you will. Yeah, don't choose paint by committee. That's yeah. my yeah. thought for the day. The facility director did not want to be the one to pick the color. <laughs> I learned that lesson a long time ago. Uh, next uh, item, I, I thought we'd just give you a quick update. Uh, we talked about our capital uh, projects for the year. Uh, you have a document in front of you. I just wanted to give you kind of a... A document that shared where we're at with it. So with our Brookings Pod 200 roof uh, uh, project, we are complete. The payments have been made. So uh, bid price was 172, 107. Uh, professional service was 198. Uh, total cost should be 191, 907. However, we haven't received the I haven't received the final pay application, which we will get a credit on um, somewhere in the ra range of 14 or 15 thousand for. Um, uh, not having to replace a number of uh, wood supports uh, up on the roof. Um, but I would anticipate having that uh, by September. Um, second one is on our pod 200, 300 boiler replacement. Uh, kind of covered the prices already, 161,900 and then 20,900 for a total of 182,800. Um, those two projects combined, uh, we've got roughly a hundred and, you know, fifty, hundred and sixty thousand dollars left or remaining within our our capital uh, asset fund. Um, I would not, uh, I will not uh, today. Uh, maybe I'll say something in, at, in next month's meeting, but uh, move forward yet with any other project, waiting just to see where we're at. Uh, and financially uh, with uh, these two projects. Uh, what is finalized with our roof in terms of return uh, or rebate, if you will, on the uh, lack of using a product on the roof. And uh, second, uh, making sure that we do get a credit from uh, DCO before we finalize anything. Um, next up in terms of our uh, Priorities that were established uh, earlier uh, was moving to the coroner's office election storage generator project. Um, might not have enough to uh, get that project done. Um, uh, so I might uh, uh, skip over that one and at least try and get the uh, parking lots taken care of uh, for this fiscal year. And if that's all that would get done this year, we could move the money uh, remaining then into next year's fund and actually get a few more things done as well. So um, we'll keep you apprised as we learn more, but I definitely wanted to give you an idea of, of where we're at. Behind uh, the first page, there's some just backup material. There's the original capital assets projects uh, that we presented back in February 2nd that uh, you approved and prioritized. And then just some basic... Uh, project information of, uh, you know, pay applications, what's been submitted to date, where it's at, so you have an idea about where we're at and how we, how we go about keeping track. So, any questions? Well, seeing no questions, uh, thank you, Dana, for the update. I'll move on to item nine. Uh, I don't have any other business. Any other business we need to talk about right now that we can? I have a question. Yes, Geraldo. When would the final report be between the task force that uh, was created by this committee regarding the financial uh, or finance committee and uh, facilities committee that we're going to be putting on some recommendations for this committee to put on a recommendation for the board, perhaps for a uh, November ballot? Um, advisory ballot, I would imagine. Is, is um, I mean, time is running out, and I was wondering when would that report uh, be com completed, presented to us, so that we could approve it and then move it forward to the county okay. board. I have um, 
had some discussion on that question this evening. Uh, obviously, we're meeting tonight. The committee, uh, the joint committee, special committee will meet tomorrow night and probably will finalize a report. I believe from there it will go to the finance ca uh, committee because of the fact we can't get it to us now in time. So it'll go, the process will go to the uh, finance committee. That report will go to the finance committee at, at, to the CAL. Oh, um, and directly to the CAL? It won't come back to us? As it stands now, the only other way we could do it is either have a special committee to do that sometime next week, special committee meeting of this committee. Uh, I mean, we possibly could even adjourn this meeting. Uh, is that a possibility to adjourn a meeting, uh, the committee meeting? Go ahead, uh, Quiz. I guess I, I would have the question of, since the committee of the whole is everyone, uh, so all the facility committee members are, are present at the COW, um, why would we need a special committee of the meeting of the facilities group alone to discuss something that's going to be in front of us in the cow. It's well, also a committee. Wouldn't it be presented to the finance committee? That committee will be presenting to the finance committee. I would imagine if they're presented to them, they should be presenting it to us as well. Well, you will be there, right? To the finance committee? No, I would not. I mean, uh, is there any reason there, why we couldn't call it a call it a joint meeting of the finance and the facilities committee because it's the same people? So, if I'm understanding correctly, you would meet tonight, and then it will go directly to the cow. My, as I understand, Geraldo, uh, the committee that special committee will meet tomorrow night and pass something out to the finance committee, which meets next Tuesday, I believe. And from there, it would go to the cow. The only way. You... Oh, okay. All right. Finance at the cow. Okay. Which again, as I pointed out, is the committee of the whole. Okay. Question well, answered. I, I could. Yeah, I could. I would suggest that if you felt absolute that it was absolutely necessary that the the facilities committee convene and hear the information or discuss the information. We could do it subsequent to the cow next Tuesday night, uh, but I don't think the presentation would need to be repeated because all of the people will be there. But if if you want this group to have a time to talk about it as a small group, we could ask for a special meeting of the facilities committee after the the cow meeting. I'm comfortable either way. Uh, I guess I'll wait and see the presentation at the cow and then move forward from there collectively. Yeah, because we, we can't that night decide to have a special meeting of the facilities yeah. committee. We have to put that on the on the record at least 48 hours in advance. You know, I think maybe let's just do it, put it on, on that, and then if we choose to have a meeting, we can. Otherwise, we can cancel it. Would that work? Mr. Hartke. Just as a point of order somewhat, maybe, um, any action on referenda as a tax referenda would be an action of the Finance Committee, not an action of the Facilities Committee. Uh, so they would be proper to handle that. What this committee would need to see is a plan on how that money would be spent and then figure out how to spend that money if it does pass, ultimately, is the way I would read the, the committee structure of the board. Uh, Mr. Quisenberry. And Josh, if I understand you correctly, that could happen subsequently to, I mean, it's not, there's no need to work more deeply on the plan unless it goes further than the Finance Committee. Yes, I would completely agree because the Finance Committee would have to move on any tax referendum, but if that would pass and move forward, then I think this Facilities Committee really needs to have some serious discussions about how we would either support it or spend it or, you know, what that is. So, yeah, I would agree with that. Mr. Quisenberry. I would agree with that 100% because this board, this board and this, not only this committee, but this board has to have a clear message about 
where that money's going and how it's going to be spent. So I would echo Mr. Harkey's mm -hmm. sentiment there. Mr. Aldo. And that referendum would be totally independent from the request from the nursing home to put a item of finance on as a referendum on the November ballot? Or would it be a combined effort that the finance committee is looking into? No? Thank um, you. The sales tax issue could, in part, give some relief at the nursing home. That's one of the things that could be an element of the package. Or you could have a, another referendum to, to specifically uh, for the nursing home itself, and that would be uh, property tax. Uh, yeah, Mr. Snyder, please. The Nursing Home Board of Directors is meeting on Thursday night to uh, make a recommendation on whether or not to advance a, a referenda uh, ballot question to the board. So we'll know some more on Thursday night if there even is interest on that. I think if they're not supporting it, um, then it becomes a moot point anyway. Uh, Patsy. Just, <clears throat> just to clarify what Mr. Snyder said, um, timetables are always important and they were the nursing home board was going to meet last night uh, the agenda didn't get posted so that meeting had to be pushed to thursday originally they were going to meet we know what they said you all are going to meet special committee was going to meet and then come cow but it it didn't work out that way Any other questions? All right, I will go on to the chair's report. Um, the next meeting of the facilities committee will occur Tuesday, September 6, 2016 at 6.30 p.m. Uh, there'll be a tour of the animal control, meet in the animal control parking lot, 210 South Bar Art Bartell Drive. The tour will begin about 5.15 and uh, conclude by 6.10. I also wanted to mention that uh, uh, Mrs. Ms. Schwartz did uh, notify us that she would not be attending tonight's meeting. Um, the only item that I, under item nine, uh, 11, the only item that would be uh, on the consent agenda would be uh, item seven, approval of the contract, ITB number 2016-005 on the ADA compliance for exterior concrete and asphalt work. Um, motion for adjournment. Mr. Quisenberry. Mr. Anderson, thank you all for coming.